Donald Trump clarifies his views on fiscal and monetary policy in an interview with The Wall Street Journal. WSJ's tax reporter Richard Rubin has today's page one story following his interview with the presumptive Republican presidential nominee. Richard, welcome. Your interview with Trump comes after he made remarks suggesting he might push to renegotiate U.S. debt in an economic downturn. Did he have more to say on that topic? Yeah, he's uh, spent part of the interview trying to clarify what he's been saying for the past few days. Uh, what I think he's trying to say is that it, if we're in a situation where interest rates might rise, that he would want to sort of substitute, uh, switch out debt so that you end up with more low interest debt going forward as opposed to some of that higher interest debt, sort of lock in lower rates. I, I think that's what he's saying. He was trying to sort of tamp down the idea that He's talking about defaulting on debt or not paying creditors back everything they're owed, uh, ideas which would be a big departure from uh, hundreds of years of history. So uh, he's trying to reassure the financial world that he's not going to do anything all that rash on monetary right. policy and debt management. Our debt will still be good. All right. So switching to tax policy. In the past, Mr. Trump has proposed lowering the tax rate. But in recent TV appearances, he said taxes on high income households would go up. Was there a clarification on his tax plan as a whole? Yeah, he he's, he ran into some trouble on Sunday because you know if you read the transcript and watch what what he said on ABC, it sure sounded like he was saying that as part of a negotiation, he'd still insist on tax cuts overall, but the tax taxes might go up on high income households. What what he said when we talked and what he said several times since is no 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 taxes will just come up compared to the really big tax cuts he has in his plan already. So it's sort of starting from that baseline of the largest tax cut ever, and then coming up slightly somewhat maybe from that as part of some negotiation. All right, negotiation being the key word there. Now, Mr. Trump will be meeting with House Speaker Paul Ryan soon. Is his policy as it stands in line with the GOP's stances on, on taxes? And if not, is there any hint that Trump may tweak to gain some more support from the party? Well, you know, Trump says he's always flexible. That's, you know, one of the things that's difficult about this campaign is he says, you know, my plan may change. I may decide to change it. We're going to negotiate it. Can't know what it is until it's done. So there's this uh, ephemeral quality to it. He's generally, when he's talking about tax cuts and he's talking about rate cuts and he's talking about lowering taxes on everyone, including high income households, is in line with where Paul Ryan has been. Um, his tax cuts are bigger than what Ryan has proposed. There's some different structures to them. Uh, but generally, they're going in the same direction. It's really about ultimately, can they all agree on how to move in that direction, and and, and can they all work together? Um, and and he's definitely apart from from Ryan on some other issues, much further, namely trade and immigration. Were you, as a journalist, a little frustrated when you interviewed Trump? I mean, reading the transcript of your interview, he seemed really hard to pin down. So he's he's very hard to pin down. But even beyond that, there's a couple of times, you know, if you look at the transcript that we've got up on WSJ.com, he, he talks, you know, he makes statements that aren't right. So he talks about the U.S. being the highest tax country in the world. And, the, and I tried to point out, no, we're not. We're, in fact, a low tax country. We have a high corporate rate, but that's certainly not uh, us being a high tax country. Um, he talks about his proposal on carried interest. But, you know, as I tried to point out both in the story and, and in, that, in the transcript, it, you know, his, his proposal actually cuts taxes significantly for people who are getting carried interest right now. So yeah, he's he's very difficult to pin down because he falls back on this answer of I'm flexible and I'm going to negotiate and so you can't really analyze my plan until it's done. Until it's done, until it's there. So what are experts saying about his tax policy as it stands, which as we are discussing is a little ephemeral? So if you look at what he's written down, and this is what the Clinton campaign is saying, is they're saying, look, He's got a plan. It's on his website. Let's look at that. And, and they're saying an independent analysis say that it would lose as much as $10 trillion in government revenue over the next decade. To put that in perspective, that's about 22 percent of what the government's going to collect in the next 10 years. That's a big tax cut. Uh, and, and then they also note that a lot of those benefits, because he's cutting tax rates so steeply on business income uh, to 15 percent from in the 30s, depending on, on what kind of business you are, that, that the benefits really flow to those business owners, which tend to be high income households. Uh, and so if you look at his plan, there are real benefits, big benefits for high income households and, and several independent analyses of that plan, both uh, from conservative groups and, and other groups uh, really suggest that 
uh, that's where the benefits of this plan will go, in addition to the to millions of people going off the tax rolls in the middle class entirely. All right. Thank you so much, Richard Rubin, for that great job on the interview and the story. Thank you. Thanks.